I want to take a couple minutes to talk to you guys about a guy who I think is a top 10 running back in the NFL, but his name just flies under the radar. And that is Elijah Mitchell of the San Francisco 49ers. Before I show you any stats, any film, I'm going to walk through two things the 49ers do to help maximize Mitchell, even Debo in the backfield, whoever's there. The first thing is something called split zone. It's a run concept where the entire offensive line is basically going to be moving in one direction. They're going to have zone blocking assignments going in one direction and a tight end or a fullback or whoever is going to come across and split the zone on some unblocked defender over here. What this sometimes allows is a lane for Elijah Mitchell to go through, or it allows for numbers on the other side, as if Elijah Mitchell were to get the zone handoff right here inside zone, we all run it Madden. You have numbers on that side, so you're going to run to that side. So it's almost like a two-way go if Mitchell needs it. Another thing the 49ers love to do is use Kyle Juszczyk. And I can walk through a very similar here. Everybody's going to zone block this way, right? The tight end, the entire offensive line, it's still that same zone concept. But Juszczyk will go in motion pre-snap. They'll snap it when he's just past the quarterback, and he will go split the zone over here. You got a guy who's really good at blocking, really good at doing a lot of other things. He can go out in the flats for a pass. That's what they build this off of. But he goes, he splits the zone. And it's the same thing for Mitchell. They love to use use check. You're going to see it in these clips I'm going to show you. There's a lot they do to help Mitchell, but I don't want that to take away from the game. I'm going to show you guys some numbers here as well. Elijah Mitchell's the real deal. He was fifth in the NFL last year in yards per game as a rookie. Correct me if I'm wrong. He was a rookie last year. And he was top 10 in yards per carry. The golden ticket statistic, after you guys look at these rushing totals from each game, he had 100 yards in almost half of his games, which is it's a lot. It, it really is. Not a lot of guys in the NFL can do that at the clip that Mitchell does it at. Um, he He's legit. He's legit. What I want to show you guys now is this golden ticket statistic I call rush yards over expected per attempt. That's how many more rush yards you get than you're expected to on any given carry. And there are freaks, right? There's Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny had an awesome end of the season last year. So he averages over two yards more than expected every time he touches the ball. But Elijah Mitchell is not far behind. He averages 0. 0.6 yards over expected every time he touches the ball. And, you know, it may not seem like a lot, but guys like Rashad Penny, they'll have less touches. You see the attempts here. 119 attempts compared to Mitchell's, 207, right? In the bigger sample size, you get more accurate data. Dearness Johnson, 100 touches, and he's up there. Guys like Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb, uh, Damian Harris, you can kind of say Tony Pollard too, but those guys are guys who have a lot of carries, so those numbers will speak more volumes to them. We're going to talk about the top 10 discussion with Harris and other guys like that. Um, but Elijah Mitchell has the ability to break a run when needed, and we're going to walk through a couple clips here. I'm going to walk through this Bears game. This, I think, was Elijah Mitchell's best game of the year. Um, we'll start it off with the seven yard run right here. This was, I believe his first carry of the game. Um, yeah, so you'll see this here. I'll walk back through it. I'm going to walk through it pretty slow. It's going to be a very similar zone concept, right? You see this entire offensive line going one way, Kyle Juszczyk coming across. He's going to, he's going to block. Actually, this is power, not zone. Yep, this is power. So you have Kyle Juszczyk as one puller, and then you have this guard pulling the other way. It's very similar to zone. You just have or, uh, that split zone you're looking at. You just have that extra puller, so it's power. But he has a decent lane here. He makes contact. The initial contact happens at the 45-yard line. I believe that's Robert Quinn. He had an awesome year. This Bears defensive line in front seven was no joke. I know the Bears weren't great last year, but this front seven was a solid unit. First initial contact here at the 45. <coughs> Watch where he finishes the run. Game pass will, will let me. Watch where he finishes his run. Right, he gains six more yards. That's the type of stuff. That's that rush yards over expected. I don't know if that's calculated in as he was expected to get two when he got seven or what, but that's the type of stuff that he can do. He can bounce off contact. Now, there are plays like this driver right here where Elijah Mitchell is sprung over by Ski. Again, you have Kyle Juszczyk in that same motion that he was just in, right? You have a motioning across, going across the line of scrimmage, and you see the play they just ran. They got seven yards on that power again. Oh, is it going to be another power? No, it's a pitch. 
You have Juszczyk again. I can't say enough good things about Kyle Juszczyk. Double teams this guy. Watch this scene open up for Elijah Mitchell right here. Like, I think I could run through that scene. You know what I mean? that that There are plays where he's schemed up. There are plays that happen where Elijah Mitchell is given these goes, and he takes advantage. You can't fault him for taking advantage of um, – good blocking or good openings. He, he does these things because he's quick. He can see the whole good vision. Anytime there's a hole, you still have to see it and hit it. It's not like a hole just magically opens up and the running back gets 30 yards. There are running backs who don't have that vision. Honestly, Saquon Barkley used to have that vision like nobody's business. But now we saw last year, time and time again, he tried to almost do too much. He would miss a hole or he'd be hesitant to hit it. And he wouldn't hit it when in reality their offensive line opened something up for him. Saquon Barkley is one example. There are other examples like that. But there are players who ha they have the ability to – or they don't have the ability to hit the hole or see the hole and hit it. And Elijah Mitchell is not one of those players. We're going to move down here to this one. Take this one. look at this Mitchell handoff here, right? I wish we had the other angle from the end zone, but you can see this is another power play. This is muddied up here. And a slower running back may not have the ability to cut it outside as quickly as Elijah Mitchell does, but Elijah Mitchell cuts it outside, sees his vice on the football right here, and puts his head down and gets a couple more yards. Again, it's nothing to really write home about. The guy does the right things. He takes care of the ball. He, he can help out a team, but there are other plays that you really see how, how good this guy is. You see this one, for example. Back-to-back -back runs for Elijah Mitchell right here. So look at a pre-snap. This is the eye formation. Another pitch, right? Again, use check opens up that hole, but you're going to see Mitchell cut. Then cut it up. Another defender, cut it up. Keep getting yards after contact. Not all running backs can do that. His vision and patience is something that's to be desired in terms of a lot of other running backs in the NFL. That is a quick cut up field. Not a lot of running backs have that ability to plant right there and cut. That is quick, and it looks so nonchalant, but he's really, really good at it. He cuts it up. Again, he fights for those extra yards and take, takes care of the ball when he does so. It's an 11-yard run in the red zone. It, a lot of times, this is going to be a touchdown, right? This is a very good run, and then you're going to see on the next play what happens. If I can get to it. Right here, right? This is an example of what I think a scheme that the 49ers used that really helped Elijah Mitchell but it's not to say that Mitchell doesn't do a good job. You see Debo Samuel coming across on this motion. Watch the eyes of these guys over here. They're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting. Is Debo going to get the ball? No, it's Mitchell. And you see, original contact is made right there at the five-yard line. But that dude does not stop. Granted, he gets help from his offensive line. That's always going to be good. But he keeps those legs moving. He stays clean in the pile. He keeps everything going, and he's in the end zone. Again, for a guy that has that type of speed, that has that type of ability – to plant his foot and cut up field, that type of power and that type of will to get into the end zone is rare, I think. We'll go back more and look through a couple other drives right here. Again here. This is the fourth quarter, right? This is where games are won and lost. This was, I believe it ended in an 11-point win, so it was a two-possession game. They're trying to, they're trying to cut our uh, two clock. Again, Elijah Mitchell here on a pitch. You can see, I'm going to actually pause it, three different spots here. One right here. No clear hole, right? No clear hole for Elijah Mitchell. Two, still no clear hole. Three, still no clear hole. Patient, patient, patient. And again, who's that right there? Number 44, it's Kyle Juszczyk. Sets it, bursts through. And then he keeps going. He's not going down easy, right? That's what we're talking about. He sees these, he sees these lanes, he sees these alleys. I, honestly, I, watching making this video, it's making me think that Kyle Juszczyk is the best player on this offense. But he has the ability to be patient, to stay clean, 
And then just that slight bit of space, that slight bit of air, not the 25, maybe it is. Reminds me a lot of LaShawn McCoy. He had the ability to just scoot through the hole and then make people miss, get yards after contact. It's rare. It's rare to have that ability in the NFL. And I think it's completely overlooked in terms of Elijah Mitchell, to be honest with you. That's part of the reason I'm making this video. I, I think that the things that Mitchell does are greatly overlooked. I believe this one was his longest run of the day. And again, this is this is one where, I, again, I think I could run through this one, right? It's that motion to a pitch. You have a guy like Kyle Uchek coming across, destroys that blocker. First of all, I think literally in the in the middle of this video, I may change the title of this video. How Kyle Uchek and Elijah Mitchell are both underrated, but Kyle Uchek comes across, destroys this blocker. Gets on a new one. But again, this is not an easy cut for Mitchell. He still has to make this guy miss. Granted, he's not coming to balance. It's not uh, an easy tackle to make. He still has got to make that guy miss. Gets contact. Keeps going. Keeps going. Keeps going. Keeps going. Keeps going. This dude can run. Again, he's not going down easy. <coughs> you even watch where this first bit of contact comes in right here. He's like 28, 28, 28-yard line. Finishes at 24. Like just those extra four yards that falling forward and taking care of the ball, it's going to go a long way. That's why his statistics are so good. Um, but this guy, this guy can play. He truly can play. I'll show you one more clip to finish it off. And then we're going to talk about what the, what the top 10 actually looks like. We'll go back here. Another pitch. Who's leading the way? Kyle Juszczyk. Now that's a lot of space. I, I'm not sure. Maybe they just bit down. It looked like the backers pushed over to the left a little bit. Not really sure why, but that's a lot of space. And Debo does actually a good job here of taking care of his defensive lineman, allowing Juszczyk to get out in space. And then again, Mitchell, is he has the space. He takes it. Again, he can't fault him for that. But like we talked about, that big run along the left sidelines was the one where I really – I was like, okay. Like where he just scooped through that hole, I was like, okay, this guy's really good. This guy's really good. The patience is Le'Veon Bell-esque, but truly he reminds me of LaShawn McCoy. Prime LaShawn McCoy, make guys miss, be smart with the football, even though he doesn't hold it out here and juggle it all around. The dude can play. And to be honest with you, I, I, I was very impressed watching a couple games, but I want to show this Bears game specifically because I feel like this was his best, at least statistically. Um, but I want to walk through the top 10 list with you guys right now because there are, I believe, six – Six running backs. You could even I'll put Najee now. Six running backs who I would confidently say are better than Elijah Mitchell. Derrick Henry, Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb, Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon. Now, injuries aside, would Christian McCaffrey be up here? Yeah. Injuries aside, would Saquon Barkley be up here? Yeah. But you can't necessarily put those guys in there now, given their career situations. And given the fact that Elijah Mitchell is only a rookie, right? There are times where there's sophomore slumps, but you have guys who come into the league like Jamar Chase, um, trying to think Jalen Waddle, like other guys like that who come into the league and light the league on fire. They're good players. We still throw them in our top 10, top 20, whatever list. Got to keep the same energy with Elijah Mitchell if we do it. Aaron Jones, I could see the argument for. But last year was a down year. I know he was hurt. It was a down year for Aaron Jones. Going into the season, you asked me, or not going into the season, going forward, given age, given all this, would I rather have Aaron Jones or would I rather have Elijah Mitchell? I would rather have Elijah Mitchell. I really would. Damon Harris, another tough one. I think you can make the argument for Damian Harris over him, but again, Elijah Mitchell's right there. He offers you a lot. Again, Christian McCaffrey, the injuries. Najee, you could probably put him over Elijah Mitchell. You know what? I will put him over Elijah Mitchell for all intents and purposes here. But among those, these 10 guys are looking at the top seven guys. I would feel comp confident putting Elijah Mitchell in eight. I would. The dude offers so much. Um, and I know he's, the scheme helps him a lot, but the 49ers offensive line outside of Trent Richardson is not great, in my opinion. It's solid. It's not great. You have guys like Kyle Juszczyk who help that run game flow really, really well, but it's not like he's running behind the Browns line. He's not like he's running behind the Colts line. You see the uh, yards over expected per attempt. He has his home in the top 10, whether it's eight, nine, or even 10, he has a home there. 
And I truly, truly believe that. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. God bless you guys.